there everyone and welcome to another video if you're new here welcome and if you've been here for a while thank you for uh, being here once again so I want to share a few highlights of the week coming up which is the week beginning the 21st of August so this week does have a sort of one step forward two steps back feel to it there's some really positive energy in the sky and there's also some energy that might sort of just turn the temperature down a bit and feel a little bit dazed and confused. So before I get right into uh, the juicy details of the week ahead, um, I'd like to share with you that within my Golden Circle membership, uh, the votes have been cast. Uh, as I mentioned last week, um, I am adding more material uh, to my membership offering, and that is uh sort of quarterly courses, so Solstice and Equinox uh, material. And so uh, the current members of the circle have voted for an introduction uh, into planetary magic. So if you'd like to uh, learn more about uh, planetary magic, um, if you'd like to learn more about the tech, if you want to get a little bit, uh, you know, develop a deeper relationship with the planets, uh, then I invite you to uh, get inside the circle. You can anticipate this course and uh, also explore uh, the back catalogue of material that's uh, currently available. I'll leave a link uh, where you can sort of choose a membership option and get inside and uh, be a part of the uh, the circle that is, uh, you know, my little thriving community. Okay, so um, there are some exciting develops, developments this week with uh, Venus Retrograde. So she hits a sort of a magical point in her phase right now, and that is that 15 degree separation from the sun. So in ancient astrology, this had a particular name, and that name is called Pharsis or Phasis, depending on your, uh, if you're an Australian like me, it's probably going to be a bit more on the Phasis side. And basically what that is, is when a planet um, reaches a 15 degree uh, distance from the sun and either goes sort of into the beams of the sun or rises out of the beams of the sun and that's what happens to venus this week so she rises uh she gets 15 degrees of distance from the sun where she technically uh, is in that position of visibility so if you ask somebody who likes to get up with the roosters you'll be able to see her uh in the morning sky uh, and this is a very uh, potent and powerful uh, position for Venus. In the tradition, uh, the condition of Phasis was um, an omen um, where the essence of a planet returning to visibility suggests an arrival or an announcement. Now, Keeping in mind that Venus is still retrograde, though now she does uh, offer the chance to see something you may not have seen before through the Venus retrograde cycle. So the Venus retrograde is very much about re-evaluation and sort of, you know, refocusing uh, and rethinking, well, maybe not re rethinking per se, but, you know, that's certainly a part of it, but re-evaluating desire, what it is you really want, what it is that you're, you really value in Venus topics of life. And so now she's visible. So this might indicate that you have a little bit more light or clarity around what those reevaluations are and what they what I can't even talk, what they mean for you moving forward. So you might be ready to make an announcement as such after um, that period of introspection and reevaluation. So this fascist condition is actually something I've spoken about in a webinar on my website called Mercury Magic. Obviously, this happens with the Mercury retrograde cycle as well. And the Mercury Venus uh, cycles are actually very similar. The Venus one is just more drawn out. So if you'd like to learn uh, more about FASIS um, and how to calculate if you have this condition in your birth chart, um, I'll also pop a link description to that webinar that's available for instant download below. So the good news is that this week, Venus saturates her light in the sky. So you might start to see uh, improvement in Venusian themes in your life. 
So as she becomes visible, she also makes a square aspect to Jupiter in Taurus, which of course Jupiter is occupying Venus's sign. And this is one of the aspects I have been anticipating all year. So um, this happens on the 22nd. And this is uh, basically the two benefic planets coming together. So Jupiter is receiving Venus as she's in that recovery phase. She's in that facet. I'm making an announcement. I'm ready to be seen in my best light. I know what I desire. I know what I want. I know what my value is now. So we're going to see a lot of improvements this week um, around Venusian topics. Uh, we'll see that on the collective stage. And of course, you will see that in your own life, most likely in the themes around uh, the Leo house of your birth chart. So the two benefics together suggest a helpful resolution or a positive outcome. Um, at worst, this could also be just the simple agree to disagree, like some kind of mutually beneficial way where you can move forward with um, a situation that has arisen out of the Venus retrograde. So that outcome or that resolution may still take some time to come to full fruition because, of course, Venus is still retrograde for a little while longer. She won't actually station direct until very early September. So an example of this, um, let's just say um, a couple have been in a rocky patch and the Venus retrograde cycle has really brought those sort of topics to a head. This might mean as Venus makes an announcement, she, uh, you know, this might mean, okay, I'm ready to... Uh, Negotiate a mutually beneficial and ethical decision as what to do to move forward. And I get the idea of ethical from the fact that Jupiter is a part of this configuration. So if you're wanting to uh, break up with somebody, this might mean what do you do with the, the mutual uh, stuff that you have together? This just might be things. It might be money. It might be assets or investments. Uh, it could even be the children. So how do you work this amicably uh, where, as the goalposts have moved. Um, so this really does look like, I mean, that's just an example. This really does look like, you know, how you know, now that the goalposts have shifted, desires have shifted, wants have shifted, what does that look like now and negotiating that space moving forward? So it is a square aspect. And so I don't necessarily see that that's a deal breaker in this, but squares are a little bit what I've called the argy-bargy aspect. Yeah, it's not typically uh, like particularly eloquent, but it is that sort of back and forward, back and forward, trying to negotiate a deal, a bargain. You know, if you're in a buying, selling situation, you know, you might offer X amount of dollars for a property and then the buyer comes back to you and says, well, the seller wants, you know, I want more. And that, that back and forward until you finally reach that agreement, which might not be, you might have to pay more than what you want. The seller might have to sell for a little bit less but you get that agreement of which you can mutually agree to move forward. So these two benefics in of their own qualities are generous and helpful. So this might indicate um, a retraction, Venus's retrograde and squaring Jupiter, that difficult aspect. This could also indicate a retraction or withdrawal of affection or generosity. Maybe you realize in a personal situation um, you're giving too much or you're taking too much is also a possibility. I mean, not many people will admit that, but, you know, some people need to. <laughs> um, and if it's a buying and selling arrangement, you know, it might be that recogn recognition that, yeah, I've dropped my price too low or maybe I've bit off more than I can chew with my budget. So when I speak to goalposts, there may be that one party in a situation that decides they're just no longer going to give what they have uh, been giving and they make an announcement as such. And so that might provide the groundwork where those future negotiations or agreements take place. So in a relationship scenario, for example, that flow of uh, give and take always changes. There'll be one partner that needs a little bit more from the other and then that kind of, you know, ebbs and flows. But if one partner is doing all the giving, 
and whether that's emotional giving, whether that is the circumstances have changed and they no longer can give what they once did. This Venus retrograde square Jupiter may indicate how that balance of reciprocity uh, needs to change. Okay, so that could be a relationship, it could be a work situation, you know, maybe you're the person that always goes above and beyond, and then you recognize, yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, it's not of value, or I'm not getting that uh, exchange of reciprocity in that scenario. So once the decision's been made one way or another with this Venus uh, Jupiter aspect, there may be a like a so now what? Now the uh, realization's been made, the agreements have been sort of uh, negotiated. That uh, you know, so now what? It may happen as Mars opposes Neptune, uh, and that happens around the twenty third, twenty second, twenty third. Um, also. So this is a pretty significant event because Mars and Neptune only oppose each other once every two years. So together we've got this planet of drive, focus, motivation and mojo uh, hits that sort of dazed and confused Neptune. And if you think about it, even though these are happening in sort of two very different uh, areas of the sky in our birth chart, they're kind of happening at the same time. So a decision might be reached, but then it might be like, what does that mean if I then withdraw my generosity or I no longer do that thing? It might feel like a decrease in motivation, maybe wondering what it's all for, Maybe you even feel a little bit overwhelmed and helpless sort of midweek. Um, this isn't really um, a period of time where you're ticking those boxes and crossing the T's and dotting the I's. This might be sort of waking up and feeling hungover, even if you've got no reason to feel as such. When Mars uh, and Neptune are in aspect to each other, this is a little bit like trying to wield a sword through water. It's really an exercise in futility. So instead of that strategic emphasis of Mars in Virgo, it might be really helpful to lean into the more creative or mystical or magical influences of Neptune. It might mean a little bit of cutting ties with something, surrendering um, under that influence of Neptune. I also can't fully ignore, even though this aspect isn't a key feature this week, but Saturn's also in Pisces where Neptune is. And so if you've really been, if Saturn's been putting you under the pump, if there's sort of this pressure to perform or produce um, or if Saturn's bearing down upon you in some way, shape or form, the Mars-Neptune is that invitation to just kind of take that step back and um, turn away from it all just for a couple of days so you can reset and restore that mojo and motivation. It reminds me of the sometimes the best thing to do is absolutely nothing. You know, sometimes that's the most productive thing to do is just to have that rest, to have that um, restoration, and then you can come back to a task or a project more um, focused and reinforced. Now, this kind of dynamic um, really reminds me of a particular song by Madonna. And I think it's the last song on the MDNA album. So if you're a Madonna fan, you'll know. And there's it's a really beautiful song. And one of the um, lines of the song is, when I let loose the need to know, then I'm free, I'm free to go. And so cue in Mercury stationing retrograde here. So that's going to add a little bit more confusion, a little bit more intensity around mercurial matters. So Mercury is, in Virgo is a data anal analysis, uh, uh, you know, data analysis. <laughs> I'm really good at sort of crunching the numbers, getting to the bottom of things, pulling things apart and trying to figure things out. Mercury in Virgo wants to know. And with this sort of Mars, Neptune, maybe it's just cutting away. It's letting go of trying to get to the bottom of data and details and just sometimes 
lean into the feeling of the thing. Sometimes you don't need to know the data to know that something's not right or you're smelling a fish or, you know, smells a rat or whatever that saying is. You know, sort of smells a bit fishy or you can smell a rat. Um, so, yeah, Mercury stationing in its own domicile and exaltation can really put things on the fritz more than you might expect. Even though Mercury is strong on paper, its capacity to uh, mess up mercurial issues is even stronger. So this could be your computer, internet issues, uh, banking, travels, the postman and deliveries and general logistics and planning. So things, uh, you know, in that capacity are going to take longer. Um, I know myself, you know, with sort of what's going on at the moment, projects and things that I would normally take me X, Y, Z time to do are taking me a lot longer. You might have to go over things twice. You might have to double check um, that things have happened in the way that you anticipated to happen. Uh, this really does speak to me that even if you delegate a job to someone else, you still have to double check that it's being done and may even have to end up doing it yourself. So just be mindful that issues to do with communication and logistics are going to sort of, you know, be jats crackered, as we would say here in Australia, go on the fritz or go a little bit haywire uh, or crazy. And things that would normally take you, as I said, a short time to do, it's like take you know, allow yourself more wiggle room, whether it's travel plans, whether it's uh, completing things, um, double check your details with time and all of those kind of uh, quintessential Mercury retrograde things. So there's some positive uh, influences around joy and reciprocity and generosity and some really helpful uh, decision making. But then there's a little bit of dazed and confused energy as well. And then, OK, what does that look like from a logistical period as we move forward? So that is the uh, uh, the conclusion to this week. So I help, hope that has helped you navigate or give you some food for thought on how to work with the planetary energy of this week. Um, if you are looking for uh, consultations or readings with astrology, I do have some availabilities in September. So if you would like to book in an astro reading with me, um, I do have some bookings still available uh, next month. So until then, uh, until my next video, that's all I've got for right now. I hope you have a really great week. And of course, I'd love to hear your experiences um, of the current astrology in the comments below. Until next time, uh, I'll see you then.